Hello everyone, I'm Joe, uh, I'm Head of Engineering at Paybase, uh, and if you care, there are my uh, details about Twitter and GitHub. Um, don't worry if you don't care, don't really care. Uh, today we are talking about CSP in JS. Now what the F is CSP? It's a very good question. Uh, CSP stands for Communicating Sequential Processes. Uh, CSP is described in a book of the same name from 1978. And CSP is a model for orchestrating concurrency. Now, <laughs> what does that really mean? Okay. So, what the F is a process in this term? Uh, a process is a piece of software designed to fulfill a specific task and a process can complete a unit of work independently and processes can be run concurrently. Think threads. But, I hear you ask, JS is single threaded. So how does this work? We can pause execution now with async await. We used to be able to do it with generators, but I do not like generators. Uh, async await is a lot nicer and we can fake threads. So, here we, I hope everyone can see, but here we have a simple async function, which is defined as a fake thread. It's an infinite loop because we can pause execution. So if we are awaiting an input at this point, we are pausing execution until we get that input. And then we can fulfill the task by processing the input and emit a result of that output. Now, if we have multiple fake threads, this is where CSP fits in. It's a mechanism for communicating between those two fake threads in JS land. CSP is based on the idea of using channels to communicate between these processes. Uh, one process may put a message onto a channel the, uh, that another process takes from. So let's talk about ping pong. This is a standard implementation that lots of people go into when they talk about CSP. Bear with me, okay? Each bat is a process. Each bat's task is to hit and return a ball over a channel. And the ball is a message. So here's a very small snippet of code. I've snipped out the CSP implementation. Basically, this would expose three methods, channel, take, and put. Channel is a factory method. And then there are two functions which take channels. And uh, one will take a value to put onto a channel. And one will just take the channels to take from. So we're going to create two channel channels here, one for whiffing and one for waffing. We're going to create a ball factory here and a bat factory here. And this bat factory actually takes two channels, an inbound and an outbound channel. And again, we're infinitely looping here because we are using the take method to await an inbound, inbound value on that channel. So then we incrementally hit the ball change whiff to waff and waff to whiff and assume that maybe it takes 500 milliseconds for someone to actually hit a ball in table tennis. Probably not right, but anyway. And here we can await the put method onto the outbound channel. Now the funny thing here is that we are awaiting put, which means we are awaiting for someone ready to take from that channel. So this will not actually resolve until something is ready to take this message from the channel. <coughs> And here we create two, baths, uh, two bats. We create a bat that will whiff wafts and a bat that will waff whiffs. And then we put a ball on the waff channel. And what we get is an infinite loop of, of two processes playing ping pong. Now obviously that's a bit useless. It's just infinitely looping. So why, what for? And initially I wasn't so sure. Uh, but I like a challenge and async await, so let's look how it's implemented. Now the funny thing is, that's it. In async await, that is it. We have a channel factory which just returns an object containing three FIFO stacks. So messages, takers, and putters. The put method takes a channel and a message to put on and returns a promise and at this point, we essentially stack the message onto the front of the messages FIFO stack, and we put the putter, the resolution of the putter onto that same stack. And if there is something ready to take a message, we immediately resolve that putter 
and we pop the message off the stack and put it in the taker. And the take message, uh, method is just as simple, takes a channel, returns a promise, puts the resolver on the beginning of the taker's channel, and puts if there is actually something ready putting something on that channel, we resolve the putter and then resolve the taker with the message. And it really is that simple. It's very small code, 21 lines of code to do this. It's, it's pretty, pretty impressive stuff. Now, this implementation has caveats. There's no error handling. There is no back pressure or buffer control. And uh, there is no alt mechanism, which is a mechanism for racing two channels against each other. But they are actually quite trivial to implement. Uh, and at this point, when I wrote this, this was back in December 2015, I wasn't sure what to use it for. I played with Flux in CSP. It was interesting, but it didn't feel right. Um, and then many months later at Paybase, here's an idea. What if we put interfaces on those channels? Uh, an interface with a method that invokes network IO, a database call, or some kind of IPC. Anything, anything at all. Let's talk about toilets. Bear with me a second. A bathroom is a channel. Each cubicle is an interface that resides within that channel. Someone waiting to use a cubicle is an independent process, I hope. And that is an implementation of a bathroom in CSP. I know it's a bit small, so we'll go through it. We're defining the number of users and the number of cubicles. The cubicle factory, which is just a simple object that returns three methods. This is the main one. This is the cubicle usage algorithm. We're basically saying that it takes between five and 10 seconds for someone to use the toilet, which is OK, I guess. <laughs> um, we then create the bathroom factory. So in this, we are creating a channel uh, of the bathroom. And then we're filling it with cubicles, however many cubicles we define. And then this is the mechanism for using that bathroom. It takes the bathroom, the user. We have a user who waits for a cubicle to become available, then uses the cubicle interface by locking the door, using the cubicle, and unlocking the door. Now, what we're doing here is we're not waiting for someone to take that, because when you use the toilet, you don't want to have to stand with the door open waiting for someone to turn up to use that toilet. You want to just leave, basically. Um, so here is how we are using it. We are basically defining the bathroom with a number of cubicles. We're creating a mad rush for the loo by queuing up 10 people all at once to go to the toilet. And we are then awaiting them all to finish. So this is what it looks like. You can see multiple people using cubicles. And when they're done, it's done. So, hang on a sec. If we put spawn child processes on the channel, that's a process pool. We're passing processes around on a channel for our fake threads to use. <laughs> Enter paybase pool. A package available on NPM for creating pools. Simplifying network I.O. parallelization. Now this simple implementation, what it does is it creates a pool of two parallelized uh, request uh, processes and will essentially allow us to create a simple mutex lock. This is not something that's actually a process, it's just a locking mechanism that locks the availability of this process for one network I.O. operation at a time. And this is the handler. We ignore the initial process that's passed in, but we get an input from the run command, which is the query. The query is passed off to a fetch, and then when we're done, it is automatically, as soon as we resolve this uh, promise, the handler returns a promise, as soon as we resolve this, this process is ready to be taken by something else. And this is how we run it. So we are creating 20 requests, and we are rating them all at the same time, and they will run with two, a parallelization of two. And it's quite simple, really. It's quite nice. It's quite effective. Child process pooling. Again, this one's slightly more complicated. But here, we're creating a pool size of 10, limiting the number of spawn processes. 
we define a create process as returning an actual spawned child process. In this case, it's cat, um, which will just echo anything that you pass into it. And the handler just wraps the process as event emitter, resolving when we get our result back. And obviously, running this, we actually run uh, 100 requests against a pool of 10, and we await all of those. And it does it pretty quickly. So there you go. Now, we use this for various things. We use it for migrating lots of data, uh, for request parallelization. We have thousands of transactions that we sometimes need to migrate, and it can take upwards of three hours. But we don't want to hammer the new system. We don't want to hammer the old system. We want to migrate at X number of a rolling buffer. And it gives us that power. But it also allows us to do things like be pragmatic in our use of languages for certain things, like cryptography. We use Go to do cryptography. We run a binary. We spawn up a pool of binaries. And we offload the work to those binaries. Um, so it's very powerful. It's very powerful. In closing, CSP is very powerful. It's a very powerful abstraction. Its implementation can be deceptively simple. You saw it, it's only 21 lines. Yet it has multiple applications within async control flow. I haven't really even scratched the surface of this. There are so many more applications, um, and it's just an exploratory thing. You need to find out where it fits in. But it does fit into a lot of things. And it's all possible natively in Node 8. So we don't Babel anything to be able to do this. We just run it in Node 8.